let's now move on to the diseases caused by this pathogen so that we can understand what can be possible by these bacteria. Diseases caused by Streptococci pyogenes can be divided into three main categories. Diseases that are caused by Streptococcus directly invading the tissue and causing damage. Or, number two, diseases caused by the exotoxin coming from the Streptococcus pyogenes. Or, diseases caused by the immune response of our body, which in turn then causes damage to the body. Pyogenic infections are divided into two types. One are the infections of the throat or pharynx, so that is a sore throat or pharyngitis caused by uh, Streptococcus pyogenes, and then are the skin infections. Skin infections range anywhere from folliculitis, that is infection of a follicle, to cellulitis. One infection is particularly specific to Streptococcus pyogenes, and that is erysipelas. We'll talk about that in, in a short bit. Now, the exotoxin-related or mediated diseases are scarlet fever, toxic shock syndrome, and necrotizing fasciitis. Immunologic or immunogenic diseases are caused by a couple of mechanisms. One mechanism is that the M protein of the pathogen looks very similar to the proteins in our heart. So our immune system cross-reacts or accidentally starts attacking our own heart, thinking these are the M proteins of the pathogen. So that is what causes rheumatic fever. And the other disease is the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, which is the antigens of the pathogen and the antibodies from us, our body, they combine together, they make complexes, these antibody antigen complexes go and they sit down on the glomerular surfaces. They cause local immune reaction there, causing damage to the kidney or the glomeruli. So that is the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Both of these are immune-mediated diseases after the streptococcal infections. Now that we understand the, the categories of diseases, let's look at each disease one by one and see how to approach their management. So the first disease to discuss is the streptococcal pharyngitis or sore throat or strep throat. Strep throat alone causes up to 7 million medical visits in the US on a yearly basis. The strep throat is transmitted or the, the pathogen is transmitted from person to person either through the nasal secretions or saliva. So once the streptococci are introduced into the pharynx of a patient, what happens is they bind to the epithelium by either of the two mechanisms. One is that the pili from the pathogen, which are covered with lipotychoic acid, these pili bind to fibronectin on our epithelium. And that allows the adherence and then the infection occurs. The other is, as I mentioned before, hyaluronic acid capsule binds to CD44 cluster on our epithelial cells. And once again, that binding causes the infection and the pathogen starts, you know, going deeper into the tissue and cause pharyngitis. In case of pharyngitis in small children, there is a serous membrane on the pharynx and it is possible that the middle ear and mastoid process are involved in the infection as well. On the other hand, for older children and adults, this infection is much more intense and severe and there, is, there can be intense tonsillitis, pharyngitis, sinusitis and then uh, middle ear may or may not be involved. So for the um, management of strep throat, CDC recommends penicillin in non-allergic patients. So penicillin V, children 250 mg twice or thrice daily, adults 250 mg four times daily, or 500 mg twice daily for 10 days. Or you can give amoxicillin 50 mg per kg once daily, once daily. 
maximum 1000 mg for, for 10 days. Or you can give benzathine penicillin G I M one dose, which is lesser than 27 kg, 60,000 units. And if the patient is greater than 27 kg, then 120,000 units, one dose. Individuals who have penicillin allergy, to them you can give cephalexin oral, cephalexin A oral, 20 mg per kilogram dose twice daily, maximum 500 mg per dose for 10 days. Or you can give cefadroxyl oral, 30 mg per kilogram once daily, maximum 1 gram for 10 days. Or you can give clindamycin oral, 7 mg per kilogram per dose three times daily, maximum 300 mg per dose, 10 days. Azithromycin can be given oral as well, 12 mg per kilogram once daily, maximum 500 mg for 5 days. Clarithromycin can be given orally 7.5 mg per kilogram per dose, twice daily, maximum 200 mg per dose for 10 days. Now let's talk about the streptococcal skin infections. As I said before, they can range anywhere from folliculitis to cellulitis.